Mm, here we go. So, got the uh, tires in. Look at that. <laughs> Turn it all the way back. There. Huh, huh. Right. It's beautiful, isn't it? Huh, huh, huh. Yeah. Of course, the traction. Tread wear is about a 420. And the traction is a double A. Yeah. So it's really good stuff. Heat temperature is about a single A. Huh. That's the way the traction is, eh? That's awesome. There you go. That is awesome. Traction double A. Woohoo! Look how thick that tread is. <laughs> See the bottom of it. Twelve and a half inch wide tires. <sighs> Ten and a half inch wide rims. Yeah, all about wire aids. <laughs> they make them extra grippy. You don't see many double A rated tires. That's the ones that go over 185 miles an hour. Dragon Rally. Come on the rims and the windows. From bumper. <laughs> oh, yeah. She is. A Chrysler. That's got a little plushie hanging out there. I'll go here. I'll tell you what. <laughs> she looks good. She looks really good. <sighs> a little carbon fiber. She is an SXT engine, not an SRT. No, sorry. Actually, I prefer it. Pentastar 3.6 liter V6. NASA, operation. IOCDF man, it's Smart Watch Militia. Yeah, yeah. Five tune. All right, right. Moon Channel 28, 129 hub. Chair Hall of Skyway, Tale of the Dragon, Smoky Mountains, the actual all 318 corners. A mm, little bit of evolved fish here, too. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta be so militia. Tablets, rope lighting back. Very cool. PA systems, data loggers. Front nine seven to one is stoichiometric. Launch days ten to one is pretty good. Disclaimers. Huh, huh. Huh. Gear, lots of gear. <laughs> oh, lots and lots of gear. Turn the top one down. There you go. And Pentastar Motor Reviewers Top Ten. Motors of all time. Yeah. That is a Pentastar. 3.6 liter V6. Beautiful motor, isn't she? Yeah, she is. <laughs> she is beautiful. More than 200 foot-pounds of torque. At 2,000 RPMs. More than 350 horsepower and 300 foot pounds of torque. 
at 3,000 RPMs. Now you're probably wondering why that looks a little different up by the silencer. No, let's have a little looking back. Notice no quarter turn lock is visible. Hmm. Slight bit of dust under the Sears XM antenna. Now I know you're thinking you got to make a choice, right? Ghost gun pop top. Three inch disc to half inch to one inch. One inch. 20 gallons a minute. 40 gallons a minute. 60 gallons a minute. With four stun gun leads around her. Thicker wiring, so we can keep them running. Thought over in the circuitry, hardwired 12 volt, still braided lines. Yeah. Poly bags. Stretch three times their size. Completely puncture proof. Lamp oil, dielectric grease, simple mix. The active ingredients for adhesive like crazy glue. Code a pair of Demzo 30 gallon per minute motorcycle fuel pumps, your still braided lines, your valves, Woo. and all that system there that will pump fire out 20 meters to the left, the right, angles up about here, the front angles up high. You want to catch the high pressure wind off the windshield, whip it up and curl it back. The back. Gives you 180 feet. So you're in every direction. Adhesive rate per tenth of a square inch, 300 pounds per whole square inch. More than 3,000. Bonding time, less than a tenth of a second. Quick as crazy glue, instantaneous, thin as water. Clean burning as lamp oil. Oil and grease float to the surface of water. So they have just spires in the ground. It's one thing. You spray a fire hiding on it, or it becomes a moving living thing. It spreads out across the surface of that water. Thin as it can get, still burn for hours. Hits a building, runs down 20 feet of walls instantly. Hits a vehicle, whew, covers the entire front end instantly. It'll spread thin. If it's high adhesive and it'll burn for hours. Excess of 3,000 degrees. Mm, beautiful thing, huh? And then, well, did you take, you know, one of the guys, the frame shop guys, who fixes all those frame shop cars, here it's squared up. Take an air chisel, put a roller on it. It's basically a four inch wide piece that has a smooth rolled surface, except for a little sharp edge there that first it narrows and thins metal. The idea is it goes up, it goes tup, 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 splits the seam, and then you paste a piece of cordon steel in there, weld on either side of it, so that you can create a four inch recess down the unit by design. Strengthens the frame, especially if you're gonna be doing high horsepower applications. Like, oh, oh, so no, the high horsepower application. Well, well, another eighth of an inch plate from front to back. Grind down all the welds smooth to re undercoat the whole thing. So your unibody is around either side of it, but not the center. At which point, you're ready for more than 1200 horsepower, huh? Frame fully reinforced, either side. Oh, yeah, you had to get there. You can get underneath that, get through it. And your welds and upside, you can run your exhaust or your exhaust. 
your bypass valve through. 30 inch piping from the front of the spare tire cover, but extended about four inches forward. Flare it all the way around the sides. Top, ram air intake, but still smooth transition re-undercoated. About an inch and a half lip, since you can't see or get to it. Diamond plate over the whole back. Welded on hinges at each side, no bolts to unbolt. Yep, seven pin latches, much like the hood pins. We have that little key that has a circle with little grooves in the outer sides. So you can press it and twist it. Really cool and similar to the old 3A racing uh, door conversion kits. Pair of uh, torque amps run in line to each other, smooth boost. 12 pounds. Can gauge full 12 pounds at 2,000 RPMs. Making an excess of over 500 and 30 wheel horsepower and over 450 foot pounds of torque at 2,000 RPMs. Piping goes directly in behind, goes right in the frame, smooth all the way forward, everything back locked. You're thinking Alpine speakers in that, right? Yeah, it's C-Series. Oh, yeah. There it is. It says Alpine right there on it. How cool is that, huh? So with those Alpine speakers in there, quarter faster than the only way to access is the fold down seat, which also quarter turn lock. You can see a speaker box, but all the control units for the torque amps are in there. If there were any such, which as you saw in the engine, ram air intake. And the torque amp bypass valve is chrome. Y'all can see the ram air well, I've been, no, I went chrome. No ram is chrome. Anything on the other side of that is not chrome. But when you put your bypass valve in, you don't lose 8% of your power to spinning the torque amps. It goes directly through ram air, and once you replace the engine silencer with the bypass valve, when you do kick in the torque amps, it closes 12 pounds of boost. You can build that 530 horsepower for four continuous minutes and 20 minutes of driving with a better electrical system and a bigger alternator. You run another four minutes. I think a look at the tread on these things, huh? Here's what they look like. Look how deep that tread is and get beneath it. And that is with them going in about an inch further into the body. They don't look that far under, but they're actually further in. Negative offset moves the wheel outward positive offset moves it in further on the body. This is a negative 45 further under the body offset. Notice how this is the surface of the rim. Usually this lip would be about four inches deep. It's less than two. You got the right out here. You can really see it, huh? 12 inch wide tires, double A grip. This is what a 220 mile an hour car would look like. It was running a torque amp with an underground tuning module. No torque vectoring. Mm, no 300 mile an hour speed limit. Fully geared with a 9 series transmission, capable of holding 500 horsepower. The Challenger's only got the 8 series, only good to 420 horsepower. But the 9 series is sequential, it's 9 speed, over 500. 
cry a treat. Over 750. Best part? Well, not $200 off. <laughs> That's 600 bucks to pull the transmission, cry or treat it, just because they think that it's cool. And I'll ask, I'll a little stretch of road, take a few guys to shop down there on either side, some CBs, and see what it'll do. You already geared for 300 miles an hour at 6,000 RPMs, 200 at 4,000. So if I were to compare her to NASCAR, she's more aerodynamic. 0.27 aerodynamic coefficient. Definitely better than NASCAR's. She's higher geared, 300 miles an hour at 6,000 RPMs. The frame's stronger. Five star head, good for a thousand horsepower. NASCAR has a little calculator they use in their cars so that you can see if they're stock cars takes a square footage of the front end this piece here ah so from the bottom of this lip up to the top it tags about a foot the top of there here's about another foot the top of there and about another foot about three feet i can touch this side and this side at the same time then it's interesting you can touch both doors without flexing my elbows she's about two meters wide Less than uh, three yards. Well, less than two yards wide. I touched both those at once. And here we go. For where the front end is, how high it is up. There's my calf. Uh huh. Ah. There's my pecs. There's the roof. So from here, I'm only six foot two, but it's about a foot from there up to my neck and then to the top of my head. So two feet off for beneath the pec and another foot off for above the calf. You actually measure, you measure a simple spot from right here to right there. From your side skirt to your roof at the highest point on your rooftop. Now it's not your front end, that's called your windshield. Yeah. But you take your square footage of your front end, you take 3,650 pounds, an aerodynamic coefficient of 0.27. That's factory though, with custom fusion plates beneath, 0.24. You give it more than 500 and 30 horsepower and a 300 mile an hour nine speed sequential. Ah, how much does last cars cost again? Ah, this will do 220 easy with a full twin torque amp and an underground tuning module. And best part, you're going to tune a module. I send you the oversized injectors with. But the thing is, when you're running a flex fuel engine, stoichiometric is 9.7. Flex fuel gas is 14.6. If you're running gas, you can already run 20 pounds of boost, and the injectors will still feed it. Now, flex fuel, different stoichiometric or fuel ratio. Pop castle, sure. Injectors come with the underground tuning module. How cool is that? Yeah, the thing I'll tell you. Uh, well, Chrysler's made some really cool cars. Pentastar is <laughs> the best engine they ever made. 
one of my personal favorites. Luxury cars. Chrysler started the luxury cars in 1960 with the 300F. Took a muscle car engine, put in a luxury car. That's what every 300 has been since. That's why you'll find Hemis in all the 300Zs. That's why you found a car that was over 5,000 pounds. Convertible wings that went from the doors all the way back where the tail lights on a 300F. They put these carbs on there. Their plan was to expand and create a non-existent market, a luxury car with a muscle car driveline. No one done that before. They still don't for the most part. So they decide they're going to put these engines in. And in the 1950s, they're the first ones to do 300 horsepower production vehicles. 1957. 375 horsepower on their carbureted 392. 2024, 485 horsepower on the fuel injected 392. Now they made sure they didn't offer any parts in the original engine. No, but uh, you want to drop a 392 in it? They'd always tell you it's cheaper than putting bolt ons on. And they put all the motor mounts in that 300F, so you could drop it in inside of an hour. Oh, they were smart, weren't they? See, luxury cars are bigger than muscle cars at the time, and everyone who was going to buy a muscle car already had one. Let me figure that out. Chrysler in the 50s. So come 1960, they want to know who the largest demographic of cars is. Well, that's luxury cars. These big, long convertibles. And Cadillac, they were the ones they're coming after. So Cadillac made a lot of luxury cars. So, hey, decide. All right. All right, guys, what is that? 300 horsepower? Take off the carburetor. It popped that carburetor off of there. I'm like, give me the smallest carburetor we make right now. We ain't doing bolt-ons, but we can detune what? About 35 horsepower. Well, we're making 300 horsepower engines since 1950, so 375 horsepower since 57. Yeah, they found a little scar they can. They bolted on there, and what kind of loss we got? Like, dang, you're putting out 270 horsepower. Like, <laughs> and it won't either. All right. Now, you make sure you tell them. They want to feel some real power and switch carburetor inside half an hour. About 10% more power. And when they get a little taste of that, want some more, you tell them there aren't any bolt-ons, they're too expensive, but they can drop a 392 in there inside of an hour. It's like, but we still have to use the same transmission. Well, fuck, use that thing on 0 to 60 in 7.2 seconds with less than 270 horsepower. Well, your thing's going to go through your heads when they start thinking about that 392 in there, huh? You swap the carburetor out, thing will zero to 60 in less than 6.4 seconds. Well, yeah, it's like excess of well, two feet longer than any parking space. Like, oh, yeah. White wall tires, chrome. But once they swap that carb, we know we're getting 392s in these things. We undercut all our competition by thousands of dollars. We get 392s and everything for a $200 carburetor swap. And at that point, we own the market. You know, muscle car and any of those luxuries. I had Bentley... 
BMW, Lexus, Mercedes, Maserati. They're all doing four-door vehicles. But they weren't doing them with muscle car engines. And you can't have a luxury car without four doors. Now they already tried it. It's just a sports car at that point. Bentley tried it too. Never did it again. That's how they built the 300 Fs. That's how they built the 300 Cs. Chrysler had a catchphrase. We build the future. You know why it worked? Because they wanted to make sure everyone was putting Hemis in their cars. The luxury car guys, the muscle car guys. They extended that out. The Dodge, Jeep. I then put Hemis in too. From 57 to around 70... Uh, five, almost. It was 20 years I was there slowly to rebuild the future. The old crisis of the 60s and the 70s had people stopping by muscle cars. And then they said, all right, we need to remind them how important these are. The crisis kept selling. Pretty much put Plymouth out of business. Along with a couple others. You know what Chrysler said? They said, get me some sheet metal. Ah, I saw this series. Go, go, go. Drop in the hemi. And they decided to go and build something fast. The future did over 270 miles an hour on a full metal body, naturally aspirated Chrysler. 1970s. Yeah, this thing weighed about a thousand pounds more than a Bugatti Veyron. It didn't have four turbochargers. It didn't have carbon fiber body work. It didn't have all the drive. Hell, it didn't have any lock brakes. They're in a cargo 270 miles an hour, weighing in heavy with no any lot brakes. Chrysler has. That was their response to the fuel crisis. Build something that goes 270 miles an hour, naturally aspirated. And Bugatti Veyron, when they came out, it was like 16 cylinders, four turbochargers, all wheel drive, carbon fiber bodywork, 253 miles an hour. And I grinned and just the crust was going to over 270, naturally aspirated. That was 50 years ago. They're in a fuel crisis. My reviewer's best. More than 10 million Pentastars and oh, so much fun to build. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. Iowa City of Man, a smart watch militia. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. OCD Mindfulness Workbook. We have two people. Anyone who might have some experience with OCD, or Nikola Tesla. You know, Albert Einstein, I'm staying up 60 hours at a time. Albert Einstein did plenty of that. And anyone who like to skip the $10,000 of sensitivity training. Yeah. Try them too. Oh, yeah, she's beautiful. Oh, oh, hashtag E85 tune. Then you find me at gaming, Raptor with no comms.